Okay, what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be controlling a DC motor using an L298N module. I like this little module, it's compact, it's got a little capacitors and everybody built in to keep everything as clean as possible. But uh, the way you control this is fairly straightforward. We've got really three pins that we need to focus on per motor. Of course there's the motor we'll plug in here. And we've got a little DC motor that we're going to be using today. Pretty straightforward little DC motor. And the first pin, which comes with a little jumper on it in this module, is the PWM. So the pulse width modulation will basically set the speed of this motor. The next two pins they control the direction. So you go pin high for one direction on this one, and you go pin high with the other one set to pin low, and it'll send the motor spinning in the opposite direction at whatever speed you're sending into the pulse width modulation pin at the end here. Then the remaining three pins are basically the same thing for this motor over here. So this allows you to control the two motors, three pins to this motor, three pins to that motor. It gives you direction and speed. So all we need to do is send in a digital right high for this and some pulse width modulation over here and you'll get one speed in one direction and if you just switch that to low and high it'll swivel around and go in the opposite direction. Pretty, pretty straightforward. Unbelievably simple code. You don't need any libraries or anything in your Arduino. Should only take us a minute or so to get this wired up. Now what we're going to be using today is, I've got a little battery pack here, it's got um, some nickel metal hydride batteries in here, so the four of them together produce about five and a third volts, which is enough to run this little driver, and it's nice that you can have an external power source. This can take up to, I believe, 12 volts, I don't know if it can go over 12 volts. And one advantage of this particular module is if you go over 7 volts, you're able to put the 12, or up to 12 volts in here, so 7 to 12 volts, and it will then deliver 5 volts out here that you can use to power up the Arduino or whatever other 5 volt things you have in your system. Now, in this particular case, we're putting 5 and a third volts into these two, so the dropout is too high to run the Arduino off here. So we're just going to run the Arduino off the USB today, but um, we could actually just run the Arduino straight off the battery as well. But we're not going to. So the first thing we're going to do is wire in the battery pack. I've got the battery pack turned off so that I don't accidentally short it out. So we put in the positive. That's pretty straightforward. there. Now with the negative we've got a slight complication and that is we're going to use a common ground to the Arduino. So we need to get these two pins in. It's a little bit of a pain because one pin is quite a bit thicker than the other pin. So I have to cross them over a little bit but I could certainly I would do this differently in an actually installed sort of setup. And there we go. So we'll run this straight into the Arduino right now as a ground. There we go. And now We've got our DC motor, got a couple of leads here, so we'll just fire them in here. I'm not concerned which direction is which, so I'll just wire them any which way. Okay. And now I'm wiring in through pins 9, 8, and 7. I'm going to use pin 9 for the pulse width modulation. I'm going to use pins 7 and 8 for direction control. 
So this orange guy is going to go into the pulse width modulation pin at the end here. You go and you want to put it in the pin on the outside, not the inside. That's just for sending the thing to high. I don't think it would be good to put it on the inside pin. And then we'll put these two right here. We lost our negative terminal from the battery, our negative wires. I say it's hard to get this guy to go in there properly where he's so much thinner. And there we go. It's pretty straightforward. So I'm going to keep the battery pack off. I'll test it just to see. We've got power. I'm going to keep the battery pack off. Put the motor up here where we can see it. And we're going to run the program. So, as you can see with the program here, we've very, very simple. No includes. Uh, we're going to go digital right high, 8, low, 7, because we want it to go in one direction. And basically, 7 and 8, as I say, are the direction pins. And we're going to set it for a fairly slow speed, going to pin 9. So that's the pulse width modulation. I repeat the pulse width modulation, which I don't need to do. So let's upload the sketch. Then let's turn on the motor control. And as you can see, every second it alters direction. And you can hear a little bit of a whine from the motor, and that's the pulse width modulation, which is causing the motor to not... It's up near the limit of what this motor can sort of handle in the way of any pulse width modulation less than that is just going to freeze up the motor. So for a moment we'll go one direction much faster, bump that to 180. And so we now have it going 180. We'll put that other one back. And we'll set it to 90. see it going fast one direction, slow the other. Then we'll bring the slower one right up to full speed. Now, I'm going to make a deliberate mistake here, and I'm going to knock this down to say 25 and 18. Those are just simply too slow. The motor won't turn. But what it will do is whine. If you get, you can hear it just, hopefully the camera will catch this, but there's just a, you can feel it in your fingers, and you can hear just a whine. Let's maybe go to 50. I think it won't turn at 50, but we'll get a whine. And if I push it into the table, it gives a little bit of resonance. As you can see, it's not turning. And the reason for that is that simply the pulse width modulation is not sending enough of a steady current. But there are solutions to this. I'm not going to demonstrate them right now. But you could throw a capacitor into the um, circuit. And what the capacitor would do is it would sort of smooth out the... the... Uh, pulses, because right now there are a bunch of square pulses that are off most of the time. And so I'm going to turn that off because that's just annoying. But what it does is the pulses are off most of the time, and then they're on some of the time. You throw in a capacitor of the right size, you'd have to work it out based on the motor, the voltage, and so on and so forth. You'll be able to smooth it out, so now you'll have a nearly steady current at a lower voltage, then the pulse is at its highest, but it'll be steady and it will make a DC motor much happier so that you'll be able to actually turn the motor fairly slowly using a little capacitor.
And basically that's everything. You can do the same thing with the other three pins, control on two motors, have them do different things. This is nearly perfect for controlling a little robot with two tires on it. Each with its own uh, motor, or a motor and steering. There's all kinds of combos that one of these can handle. They're cheap as dirt. I think you can get them on eBay under two bucks. And with a great big heat sink, the thing can handle, I believe, up to about two amps. I wouldn't push it quite that high, but these are great. Certainly a lot simpler than trying to wire in your own circuit. And seeing that the LN or L298N by itself is going to cost you nearly as much as this module, unless I was space constrained, I would buy rather than build. Anyway, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask, and feel free to suggest topics for future episodes.